Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, let's go ahead and learn about Amazon S3 or Simple Storage Service. If you guys recall, in the previous lesson, we learned about the various components to build any AI or ML model. And that's simply our data. We need a ton of data. We also need a model and we also need compute. And we found that basically AWS offers all these different services for us. So when it comes to the data, and storage of that data. We have storage here, and S3 is one of those. When it comes to the model, we can use Amazon SageMaker, where we have tons of readily available algorithms, built-in algorithms within SageMaker. And we're gonna learn about many of those algorithms over the next couple of lectures. And we also learned, learned about compute. And here, when it comes to compute, we have EC2, for example, and Lambda. And today, we're gonna have an entire lecture where we learn about EC2. Okay, so let's go ahead and learn about Amazon S3. So Amazon S3, or Simple Storage Service, is a storage service that allows individuals or enterprises simply to store and protect any amount of data. Think of it as now you have storage available for you in the cloud. Amazon S3 is extremely easy to use. I'm gonna show you guys today how we can create a bucket and you guys are gonna hear this word a lot. When I say a bucket, think of it as a folder where we are going to store data. That's all it is. And you can even do what we call it or provide finely tuned access controls, meaning I can give specific people in a specific company access to a specific bucket. I can maybe block them to access specific folders and so on. Amazon S3 is extremely durable and extremely available as well. So we're talking about 99.9%. .9%. Basically, if you upload data to S3, most likely it will be stored in there and it, you, you're not gonna lose it and you can easily access them as well. So it's readily available. Amazon S3 offers many enhanced features such as scalability, data availability, security, and performance. So let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper into that. So Amazon S3 is built to be extremely simple and robust. And basically we can go ahead and store data within uh, S3 in form of buckets or directories. Again, think of it as bunch of buckets, like bunch of directories, and we're gonna have subfolders within those buckets as well. So please note that each of these buckets will have global universal unique name meaning that if I create a specific bucket, it, has, it must have a unique name, so I cannot have the same bucket name kind of used by somebody else, okay? This is very important. You can store an infinite amount of data in a bucket in which each object can contain up to five terabytes of data, basically. So essentially, you can go ahead and store any data you want, but within one bucket, you have a limit of five terabytes of data. S3 allows anyone to collect, store, and analyze the data from anywhere in the world and in any amount as well. And please note that data is stored on three different availability zones to ensure data protection. And what's really powerful as well about uh, S3 is that the data is fully encrypted to ensure compliance and security. And there's a great video here. I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and check it out. Just maybe watch this, uh, this YouTube video that talks about S3 in general. Okay, so what I wanted to show you guys right now is I wanted to show you how we can create our first bucket. And please note that this is very important because in the next lesson, I'm going to show you guys how we can train a very simple machine learning model using AWS. And in order to train a machine learning model, well, I need data and I need to store that data somewhere. And basically we're going to use S3 here to store our data. And that's why I decided to kind of start our um, day today by covering S3 because it's very important. And that would be kind of the basic block or the basic foundation when we train any machine learning model. When we train any machine learning model, we're gonna upload the data first to S3. That's kind of a no brainer. And then once the model is trained, the model artifacts think of it as a trained model parameters, will also be stored in S3 as well, right? So S3 will be a key player in our machine learning journey. 
So I've included snapshots here for you guys if you guys wanted to go ahead and check exactly what we are doing here. But let me go back and navigate to S3 and show you guys how we can do that live. So right now I'm in the AWS Management Console and I'm going to go ahead and search for S3. And you, should, you guys should be able to see that I have S3 here, scalable storage in the cloud. Click on it. And here we go. And here it's telling you that you can store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. And Amazon S3 is an object storage service that offers industry-leading scalability, data availability, security, and performance. And again, here is a great video. I strongly recommend you guys check it out. But what I wanted to do right now is I want to go ahead and create a bucket. So I'm going to say create a bucket. And I need to give a bucket here a unique name. So I'm going to call it, let's say, my first bucket, something like that. And here I need to specify the region. If you guys remember, we had multiple regions available. So we have the US East. This is the US East one, Northern Virginia. We also have Ohio, Northern California, Oregon, and many other as well applications in Canada, Central Canada. We also have the Europe and Middle East as well. So let's go ahead and keep it as is. And you guys feel free to choose any bucket you want, really. Here we have what we call it the object ownership. This simply controls ownership of objects written to that specific bucket. And here I'm going to say ACLs are disabled, meaning all objects in this bucket are owned by this account. Access to this bucket and its objects specified using only policies. Okay, so this is what what's recommended. And basically here, the ownership of this bucket is through this specific account, okay? So keep it as is. If you guys scroll to the bottom here, you should be able to see that by default, all public access will be disabled. So here, it's telling me that basically no one else from maybe a different AWS account can go ahead and access this specific bucket. It's by default, everything is blocked, okay? So I'm going to keep it as is. And then here, you can go ahead and enable what we call it bucket versioning. Don't worry about that. Just keep everything as is. We're going to disable bucket versioning for now. And then you can also add tags, if you will, specific to your bucket. I'm just going to leave it as is. You can go ahead and enable encryption, if you will. So that will add an additional level of security. Or you can go ahead and just disable encryption. So let's keep it disabled. And you can go ahead and say, please, go ahead and create a bucket for me. And what you guys see is it's telling me, well, a bucket with the same name already exists because I've already created a bucket before that has that name, my first bucket, basically. And as I mentioned, the name has to be unique within my uh, within S3. So what I could do here is I can go ahead and maybe say my first bucket, let's say a thousand, for example. OK, here we go. This is unique. This is good. And everything looks great. Let's go ahead and click on create bucket. And that is going to create our first bucket for me. And here we go. What you guys see is now my first bucket has been successfully created. Here the AWS region is US East and uh, simply in Northern Virginia. And you can go ahead and click on that bucket, if you will. And you can simply go ahead and upload data here to that specific bucket within S3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the course package and I wanted to upload one single image to my S3 bucket that I just created. All right, so in the course package, you guys should be able to see a, um, a folder here called uh, my AWS Essential Starter Pack 2. And you should be able to see Sunflower here. Basically, this is the PNG image that I would like to upload. So I'm going to drag and drop this image. So I'm going to select it, drag and drop, and that is going to upload the PNG image entitled here Sunflower to my S3 bucket. So I'm going to say, well, this looks good. Please go ahead and upload that. And that is showing here it's being uploaded. And here we go. Upload has been successful. And now the image sunflower.png has been successfully uploaded to S3. So here we go. Now I have my image and that's pretty much how you can upload essentially one image to S3. And I'm going to show you guys, of course, in the future, how we can upload a massive amount of data to S3 
because we need Amazon SageMaker to have access to that data and start to train machine learning models using data available in S3. All right, so what if I wanted to, let's say, view this image, for example. So here again, I am in my bucket, my first bucket 1000. Here I have my sunflower.png, if you just click on it, you should be able to see here the object overview and you should be able to see a link here that is the object URL that is where you will be able to access and kind of view this image per se. So if you click on it, you guys will see that right now it's telling me the XML file does not appear to have any style information associated with it and it looks like there is an access denied. And the reason is, is because not anyone basically with that URL can go ahead and access this image. And the reason is because I limited the access to specific people, right? It's, it's, I blocked access, public access from anyone, okay, with the URL. So why don't we go and maybe play around and try to change it and see if anyone can go ahead and access that specific image that is available in my S3 bucket. All right, so if I would like to change that, you can head back to the bucket, which is my first bucket 1000 here. You can click on permissions and you should be able to see block public access. If you can edit that, you can click on edit. And what you guys see here is by default, we have been able to block all public access. So let's go ahead and remove that. So anyone with the URL can simply access my image that is contained within my bucket which is my first bucket 1000. Let's go ahead and click on save changes. Here is telling me, are you sure you wanted to do that? I'm gonna say, well, please confirm. You need to type in confirm here and you say confirm and here we go. Now, simply, uh, I don't have, I, 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 can, I did not block access to the public right now. So if you head back to objects and if you click on the image right now and you click on object URL, you will notice that right now you can actually access your image. Okay, it looks pretty good. And now I have simply access to my image from anywhere, essentially. And please note that if you wanted to change the permissions, you can click on permissions here and you can click on edit and you can go ahead and allow here kind of grant access or disable access to anyone for this specific image. So you can act, uh, basically edit the what we call it access control list or ACL and here in order for anyone to access that I wanted to have everyone public access read and read as well and it's telling me are you sure I'm gonna say yes I understand click on save changes and now you are 100% that anyone will click on here you should be able to find the image and access your bucket it's strongly recommended that you guys don't do that okay you don't leave your buckets open to anyone so let's go ahead and reverse what we have just done so I'm gonna click on my first bucket 1000 and then I'm gonna click on permissions and then I'm gonna click on edit and I want it to block all access. So are you sure? I'm gonna say yes, confirm, copy, paste it here. Please go ahead and confirm. So now I have been able to block all access and it's shown green here, that's good. Let's go ahead and see if people can actually access my sunflower image right now. If you click on object URL, here we go, access denied and now basically the access has been blocked and that's exactly what I'm looking for right now. Okay, all right, so that's it. That's simply all I have for this basic lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lesson, let's go ahead and learn about EC2. Please stay tuned, best of luck and I will see you guys in the next lesson.